Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Kingdom Hearts 3 playthrough. Last time we took out a giant Heartless, this time we're waking up God knows where after we fell into the sea, because of course... Donald? Goofy? Where are the others? After you fell, we came looking for you. I guess they must have kept going. Thanks, that's awesome. Oh. And I was so happy that we got to see them again. That's eager to sail under Captain Jack Sparrow. Who? Oh? Jack! Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps you'll consider an arrangement. One which requires nothing from you but information. Regarding the Brethren Court, no doubt. In exchange for fair compensation, square my debt with giants, guarantee my freedom. Of course. It's just good business. Were I in a divulgatory mood, what then might I divulge? Everything. Where are they meeting? What are their plans? Yeah, I have to say the CGI on that scene was amazing, and there are certain times throughout, um... Shall we? The entirety of the Caribbean where you just go, Shall we I know that's not real, Some but that fire. looks I'm really, really bloody ship. close to real. It's ridiculous. So, let's go get one. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Sora and Jack sure are cut from the same cloth. Wouldn't quite say that, but hey. Use that key to free me, Sora, and you have my most certain promise. I'll the power and the sea you ever wish for, Mia. Free her... how? Yeah, this introduces a whole thread that is very important and integral to the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. Um, and it gets a sort of side mention here, but it's not nearly as well portrayed as it could have been. But we get to explore underwater in what is arguably the best underwater mechanics the franchise has ever had. Like, I mean, the only thing that really we've got to go on is Atlantica, and Atlantica was not great. Um, this is definitely a lot better um, in terms of movement, and speed, and combat, and everything. So, uh, honestly, I don't feel too bad whenever I end up having to sort of go for a swim in this world. You are going to be doing it a little bit, not as much as any other time, sort of anywhere, but it is nice that you've got more fluidity in terms of exploring the Caribbean, because you've got both above land and under the sea, and that's just quite fun. But obviously, I'm just sort of mucking about here with menus and going all through stuff. Um, but as I mentioned at the end of the last part, uh, very, very recently, in terms of recording this commentary, um, Square Enix introduced um, two patches to Kingdom Hearts 3, introducing things that a lot of people really wanted. So, um, 1.04 and 1.05. So, uh, what's really quite nice is that so 1.04 added in critical mode as a new game mode so obviously in terms of your difficulty you've got a much higher difficulty above crowd um, and from everything that I've seen so far it is very difficult <laughs> and I think for some people that is the challenge that they wanted at Kingdom Hearts 3 and for other people they're finding it a little bit too ridiculous um, it introduces, I think, a grand total of three new abilities, 
um, which relate to critical mode. Um, the behaviour of some of the enemy characters has been adjusted. Um, with the Frozen Slider minigame in uh, Arendelle, um, you can now access that from the mobile portal, which you weren't able to do in the original version. You can also check which treasures you have got, um, uh, I think, either on the result screen or sort of in something else. So that's definitely a lot more helpful. Um, there is also a check mark displayed on items that you've already synthesised in the Moogle shop, which I have to say, I really wish they had, you know, put in before I went through and had to do all of that for this playthrough. Because, you know, that would have helped me out a lot rather than having to go, right, what have I not got on this, what do I need to get in this, and so on and so forth. Because it was ridiculous, and it's definitely a quality of life I um, fix that needed to be put in there. Um, they also added in messages such as game help for various bits and bobs, fixed various problems, and apparently when this version is installed, new save data is created. Um, the 1.05 patch notes, um, when you start a new game with new game, um, you can effectively do a new game plus, which allows you to take over your keyblades and stuff from previous clear data. So if you had managed to sort of go through all the challenge of getting the ultimate weapon um, in your original save file, you can start Kingdom Hearts 3 over again with ultimate weapon. I believe it's thrown all the way back down to level 1, so it's not giving you the easiest rides, but still. Um, they also changed um, some of the processing about photography, and you are able to save up to 200 photos rather than the initial 100 photos. Um, so, uh, one of the things that uh, Tai Yasue um, said with relation to critical mode is that you're definitely going to want to make use of cooking and using the benefits that you get from having those meals um, to make your ride a little bit easier. Um, so, uh, it's really nice that they've sort of done that all as free DLC, um, because it's all stuff that really probably should have been in there to begin with. But obviously, when you're developing a video game, sometimes but I'd say particularly in the case of something like Kingdom Hearts 3, the main focus is on getting the game shipped in a state that is wor like it, it works, it looks like it needs to, um, everything functions pretty smoothly, and sort of, it feels done. Because I think that's one of the things that um, particularly in a lot of modern video games is that they don't feel done, they don't feel finished. And so whenever there's like a patch or whatever, it just feels like, well, this should have been done before you released. It's, it's the cold curse of the day one patch issue, um, which you look at and you just go, just, just, you know, finish the game before you ship it. Surely that makes more sense. And, I mean, that does open up part of the whole uh, issue that is currently being discussed in uh, the video game industry of, um, I mean, it's, it's been discussed for a while, but it's had a resurgence in terms of the idea of crunch periods and unhealthily long work weeks. Because, like, there's a reason that 37 is sort of, well, 37, 37 and a half is the average or the typical work week for most jobs. Like 9 to 5 is normal. Um, anything over that becomes a little bit, li little bit more ridiculous. And so when you get, like, games companies saying, like, they've ended up doing like 60 to 80 hour work weeks it's just like no th th there is a problem there definitely um, 
But obviously, when you've got sort of those crunch periods, you don't necessarily end up doing your best work to get the game as good as it should be. And I would personally always much rather a company delay a game to allow their staff to actually, you know, live and not have mental breakdowns. That, that would be the ideal. But also because uh, taking that extra bit of time means that then you can, you know, release the stuff on the disc. And so if someone has bad internet, and while that is as we progress further and further down the line getting smaller and smaller in terms of people who don't have good internet, um, it means that those people are not completely screwed out of getting content that everybody else is getting access to. Because I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it just it just makes sense. Like, yeah. So you make sure the game's finished to a good quality, good standard, and then it, you can look at things after that of balancing and extra difficulties above and beyond what was in there initially, and. Sort of that's when I think patches can come in handy because also, as good as a lot of QA testers do, they are not going to catch every single bug that a game has to offer. Like that, it's just it's just not going to happen because people are weird in how they play games, and someone can think they've figured everything out. They have not. I mean, speedrunners are a prime example of that. So, fixing bugs that you didn't, you weren't able to find in QA testing, perfect use of patches. Adding in extra difficulties, perfect use. Balancing things that you've noticed once you've got it to a mass of players, perfect use of it. Um, also, uh, downloadable content where appropriate. And I think that Kingdom Hearts 3's paid DLC, um, which is coming, um, called Kingdom Hearts Remind, which sounds pretty fun, if you ask me, um, is going to sort of have some really quite nice things in it, um, including sort of uh, bits and stories of um, various different things. So like an additional scenario, um, a limit episode, a secret episode, um, new bosses, new keyblades, new form changes. Well actually from the looks of things the new keyblades and new form are free of charge, which is quite nice, I will take that. Um, but also you have sort of the story DLC, um, which is called Remind, and then the Limit episode and Secret episode. Which some people will always go and say, uh, it should have been in the game to begin with, uh, but honestly, I think, th for me anyway, I'm happy with the package that I got. I spent a pretty decent amount of time with it. And I'm okay with that. I mean, obviously, give me more Kingdom Hearts. Like, I just I love the way the game plays. I always have loved the way the Kingdom Hearts franchise plays. So, give me more Kingdom Hearts, please. Yes. Um, but yeah, and to be honest, I think. Well, I say I think. I, 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 this previous times I've been like, yes, I'm, I think I am going to get this DLC, and then I just haven't. Um, I like the Donkey Kong Adventure in Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle because I wanted to get that one. I, I have not yet. Um, I think I always sort of intended to get the DLC for Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and didn't. Um, I think I potentially intended to get like the Champions Ballad in Octo Valley. So Champions Ballad for Breath of the Wild, Octo Valley for um, 
Splatoon 2. No, nope, haven't done them yet. So, whether I actually do end up getting the DLC for Kingdom Hearts 3, different kettle of fish. But I like the idea of it, and um, I, I, I might, might give it a go. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how I feel at the time when it actually comes out, and also how much it costs, because that, that is going to be a deciding factor as well. Um, but I do like that they are looking to sort of support Kingdom Hearts 3 a little bit further out from its initial release. Obviously, I am um, sort of, I, well, personally, you've done your work. I personally do not need any more out of Kingdom Hearts 3. So, get the team on to the next game because I'm really excited about the prospects of what awaits. Slash, considering um, Square Enix probably needs as many people on deck as possible if they intend to get um, any part of the Final Fantasy VII remake out before the end of the decade. Um, probably should do that. <laughs> yeah. I think people might be a little bit annoyed, but uh, we have now gotten another link, Sea Spectacle, which allows us to summon Ariel. I mean, perfectly fitting, we found Ariel under the sea. Under the sea, darling, it's better, down where it's wetter, take it from me. Up on the shore, they work all day, out in the sun they slave away, while we devote in full time to floating under the sea. <laughs> As I said, even where there's sort of, I mean, I suppose there, there was the yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me at the beginning of this world. But I'm just going to throw in all the Disney songs that I can really fit in here. Because <laughs> why the hell not? I'm not going to get the chance to do this really much ever again. I mean, definitely can't really do it during um, the next world, San Francisco, and definitely can't really do it during the ending. So, um... I'm getting to a point where I'm limited in terms of the uh, the songs I can sing for King Hearts 3, so let me have this. <laughs> huh? Jack? Finders keepers. How'd he get here so fast? Mine. Sammy? Now, Sammy! Jack, you already have the Black Pearl. Aye, uh, to which this ship holds no candle. <laughs> Bus, take what you can, mate. Now then, my ship has a captain, but it does appear I'm in need of a crew. Suppose you'll have to do. Don't dawdle. Climb aboard. Um. Ready now, helmsman? Ready enough, Captain, but aren't we kind of trapped? Mm hmm. Now, Sora, I know you've made passage through straits far more dire than this. Just follow your heart's command. <gasps> Make way!
So yes, we get our own ship, and we actually get to fully explore um, the Caribbean. It's basically like Wind Waker, except you end up in a lot more combat with more Assassin's Creed ship combat style. Um, and it's a much smaller world map, but it's still gigantic. Don't let this chance sail by, mate. Like, really ridiculously gigantic for Kingdom Hearts. Like, you're going to be exploring this whole thing for quite a while if you uh, actually want to, you know, get everything. The So, I like that the world is as big as it is, because it really does make it feel like the Caribbean. You sort of feel very much like a pirate, and it's quite exciting and fun and all that jazz. Um, the only problem with it is that, actually, in terms of what you need to explore to beat the world, um, Basically, just a, a bit of Port Royal. From what I remember, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see it all. Because honestly, I do. <laughs> in terms of trying to get to uh, the end of uh, this world, I was just like, I'm just going to go however far I need to, do what I need to do, and at the end of the day, the world just sort of ferries you along. I mean, you can go anywhere to any of these islands if you want to. Um, you unfortunately can't put like a waypoint on there, which I do feel is a slight missed opportunity. Is like, give me a, like something that I can sort of mark on my map and then it marks it on my mini map to sort of give me more of a direction of where I want to go. Because as it stands, you sort of end up coming out into the waters and just sort of sailing about with no real guidance of where you want to go. Um, but the ship combat is quite fun. It's not perfect, and it's the thing that led to the most deaths for me. Um, for reasons that I will explain as we sort of edit, ed, enter into the end of the world. Um, well, end of this world. Because um, it makes more sense there, but because you can't actually heal as a ship, bit of a nightmare! This time there's somebody aboard. Isn't that... Not the merry company I'd hoped for. Parley! A black coat! Of course. You back in the organization? Yes. Surprising, isn't it, that they do me the honor? Never count your cards until they've all been dealt. Jack, don't you give this creep the time of day. <laughs> Come now. Are you really so unsophisticated that you decline a gentlemanly conversation? What'd you say? Sora, uh stand down. It's the code. Mustn't strike a pirate aboard ship when said pirate offers to confabulate. Ah, yes. And how could I love games and contests without honoring the rules? Because only by winning fairly does victory have any savor at all. But, of course, the code is actually more guidelines than rules. Speak your piece. Hmm. I am looking for a box. A chest, perhaps. Huh. You know the one. 
Yes. Maybe. No, I know of a box. But said box is not a box you want to trifle with, mate. Trust me. Really? A wager, then. And of what nature would this wager be? What say we have a little race to that charming port town which you hold so dear? Port Royal. Yes. Whoever reaches it first is the victor. And the stakes? You tell me all about that chest. Against what? I will get you whatever it is you want. Hmm. Hmm. Done. Jack? Then we have an accord. Now, let us begin. All hands, prepare to make sail. But Jack... Drop canvas! Hey, Jack! With a will, lads! Jack, listen! What? Oh. You can't let him get his hands on that box. Do you really know whatever it is that he's looking for? Let's just say there's a potential possibility he wants the chest containing Davy Jones' heart. Does I have the foggiest notion why he'd covet the blighted thing? Is it a black box? It is more black than blue, so yes. Hmm. Do you think it's the one? No. And when in the race would keep it out of Organization 13's hands? Hey. <laughs> You're right! What are you three muttering on about? Basically, we need to win this race. Precisely. No purchase, no pay. You might have the makings of a pirate after all. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so yes, we have a race against Luxord to uh, Port Royal. Now, this is not easy. I would say that this is harder than the uh, delight that is the um, the boss fight that we had earlier on. And the reason for that is that you've got all these sort of tornado cyclone things going on. Uh, you've got ships ramming at you and Luxord attacking you. You could att attack Luxord yourself, but it's... It's really quite frustrating because also you're going to get to this central bit and what happened the first time that I played through this, I got stuck. I was very annoyed um, because it wasn't my fault, it looked like I could make it. I could not. And it was, yeah, it was just very frustrating because I was sort of aiming for one bit and then it wouldn't let me take it and it just sort of rammed me into something that I didn't want to be in and it just makes no sense. I mean, look at that. It's just like, I know that, you know, the ship rammed me out of the way, but still. Like, clearly that is a, a quick and easy way to get through. Why are you sort of not letting me get through, you stupid thing? I think I did a very good job of editing out my failure, like, but still. Um, and the other thing is that at this point you don't really have um, much... How shall I put it? You don't have much acceleration. I mean, it's a ship, so I mean, what the hell do you expect? Um, but... Yeah, I I was not a fan of this um, because ultimately it led to my first death, so to speak. Yes, was not impressed. Particularly because even if you win the race, Luxord's still going to screw with us. At which point we technically are not going to win the race. So, yeah, not helpful, Starboard not great either. All clear. We got this one in the back. They should have just done it like they did the Riku race in the original Kingdom Hearts. 
of have it be a thing, but it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. The game isn't over until it's over. Because, like, seriously? That just makes sense to me? Fire! Also, this is, like, just a real dick move on Luxord's part. I mean, I know he wants to win, like, but still. Also, I will say, even when you get to higher levels with the ship, it's still not that manoeuvrable. So, it can end up being really, really irritating. You can use the water wall, which is probably sort of recommended. Um, but you are going to want to use the sort of special attacks that you can get because, my god, they are useful. The other thing that you want to do is, on all of the different ships, what you'll generally see is these big glowy balls. I know, and basically you want to attack those big glowy balls because they will uh, do the most damage to your opponent. And if you kind of destroy them, then generally that will sink the ship. Think of it like battleships with video game weak points, that's basically what you want to go with. Um, also, um, yeah, honestly, you should be doing maybe a little bit more, because um, I'm just sort of spamming you right now. It does do that to obviously get you away, but, like, honestly, he was just letting me attack right there, so it's really not that exciting of a fight. And also, once again, I think I could have and would have enjoyed this combat a lot more if there was a way to heal whilst you were on the ship. I think ultimately that's the thing that ends up annoying me more than anything about the ship combat. It's the whole thing, if you give me a new gameplay style, but while that is fun, if you don't give me the same chances and options to heal myself, then I'm not going to be that impressed. But hey, once we've destroyed it, we get to board it and, um... Ah, Hello, Luxord. And yeah, he's just going to throw some uh, delightful heartless and nobody's at us. So I believe this is the return of the gamblers. I'm just going to double check that that is what they're called. Also, I am terrible at Sea Spectacle. Absolutely terrible. Because the idea is that you... Um, sort of uh, jump into the green uh, holes, I think, or not, um, but you sort of want to splash a mermaid dive and stuff and, oh that's it, you, sort of, you go into all different sort of areas, you don't aim for the glowy circles, you create your own, and they create fountains and then sort of when you end it, it goes wee and it's beautiful. And yes, I am right, they are the, uh, the gamblers. But there are quite a few uh, different Heartless throughout here, so there is at least a nice bit of variety um, throughout the Caribbean. And I mean, considering its size, Lummin needs it. Although I don't think that um, the gamblers really appear all that much after this point in the world, because, I mean, they might appear a bit later on, but sort of once Luxord's done, Sword's done. And he's a bit busy with other things. Also, can I just say how glad they am that I have Thundaga now? Because Thundaga is absolutely incredible in this game. It's just 
it's easily sort of one of the best magic attacks out there. It's what I would definitely recommend for any sort of massive enemies that are attacking you because it causes so much damage and does just such wonderful things to your opponents that it just makes sense. Just use it. And um, then obviously you can go into Thundaza because once you've gotten up to a Gar level spell, you can start using Zar level spells as your grand magic. And that is just really, really awesome. Also, this is never fear. I mean, to be fair, if I was spinning around with swords and, you know, doing that with bombs, I probably would be slightly fearful for my life. But it is okay, because this is the last Heartless, and um, he's really not going to stand much of a chance. And there he goes! And uh, I think we need to have a few words with Luxord, because that was not cool! Like, we need to do things with honour! And he has definitely not done that, so let's put it that way. <laughs> Magnificent. I salute you all, gentlemen. Mm, you're up to something. I love it. Perish the thought. I know when I've been outdone. You were outdone before you even started, mate. But I admire your conciliatory way of conceding defeat. Ah, yes. Now, I believe I owe you your prize, but I neglected to ask what it is that you want. Perhaps you'll enlighten me. <laughs> Aye, that's easy. I want the chest that's aboard the Dutchman. No, Jack, don't tell him! Hmm? Really? Uh. Not good. Huh? Oh, Jack! Well, I didn't tell him which, Dutchman. You cracked him! Actually, I outwitted him. You knew he'd tell you where it was! <laughs> I've always been far more interested in the long game. Now let's see where it takes us. That is, if you stay apace. After him! Nay. There's no point. Why not? The ship's listing near to scuppers from that cannon fire. She'll be needing repairs. Best make berth at Port Royal. What? <laughs> 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 